Mr. Toastmaster. Uh, no honored guest today, but uh, fellow Toastmasters, it's a pleasure to be here. And I'd just like to start out for those of you who have not yet to meet me. Uh, my name is Michael Schwartz, and I'm fairly new to Toastmasters, but today I'll be giving my icebreaker speech. And I will be, as I went through um, developing the speech and doing the outline and discovering what I wanted to share and what I didn't want to share, uh, there is a sentiment in my mind and a reflection that I'm grateful for my life, and there's a common theme of gratitude throughout. So I'll be using that as the staple of my icebreaker speech and why I'm grateful for my life and the opportunities I've had thus far. So I'd like to start out with a question. Who here is a native Arizonan? No one. Okay, well, I myself am a native Arizonan, and I'm proud of that fact. Arizona has many things to offer, uh, be it the landscapes, we have high, high forest, uh, mid-range deserts, multiple rainy seasons, uh, agriculture, plethora of opportunities for recreation, and a growing economy. So Arizona, to me, I've been able to identify with that and been grateful for that, but the diversity of not only the landscapes and the opportunity, for me, what really stands out in Arizona is the diversity of the people. We have people from back east, the Midwest, uh, we're influenced from the, west, from the west coast, we have the Hispanic culture and the indigenous peoples, all here in Arizona, sharing the ideas and their philosophies, and it really, to me, equates a perspective of wholesomeness, and to me, Arizona could be also considered maybe the melting pot of the United States, bringing all those different ideas together under, under one state and really working to accomplish um, what we see as the goals of Arizona. But beyond that, you might wonder how I became a native Arizona. Well, I was born to John Schwartz and Amy Jane Gumacher, on December 5th, 1990, down in St. Joe's in Phoenix. My father moved to uh, Lake Havasu City in the eighth grade. He was, or he became a pharmacist at the, went to school at the University of Arizona, became a pharmacist. My mother is a 30 year teaching vet, uh, 30 year kindergarten teacher, veteran of teaching, uh, excuse me. So my mother is a 30 year teaching veteran uh, here in the Kyrene School District and they, I also had a sister, Laura, who is followed in that pathway of education, and she is an art teacher up in Flagstaff. Now, because she is an art teacher up in Flagstaff, she chose to name my nephew, Alder, after a tree species. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love our family, and we spend time up in Pace, and I look forward to this Thanksgiving playing with those wooden blocks I made for Alder, because he's not allowed to have plastic toys. But. Looking, looking forward to that time and that family tradition. It was role modeled to me by my grandfather, George, on my father's side, a man that I looked up to, um, not only because of his family first mentality, but because of his service in World War II as a co-pilot on a B-17 bomber in the European theater. And that was someone that I looked to for advice and I was proud to call my grandfather. So following in those footsteps and because I chose to take a more social path in high school, I was able to join the military at the age of 19 and join the United States Army. I was stationed at Fort Carson, Colorado, and deployed twice to Afghanistan. And that was truly a profoundly great experience in my life, one that is fundamental to my belief system now and maybe some of my growth as a leader. But what really mattered to me in the Army was my family. That was my second family. And these people really meant a lot to me because of the diversity of where everyone comes from coming from, in a, in a section of eight people for an artillery howitzer section, I had a chief from, a Mexican chief from California, a country boy from Colorado, a skater kid from Denison, Texas, a uh, black kid from the hood in Baltimore, a uh, young child of Mexican immigrants in Florida, a Boston prep kid from, Bo or a prep school kid from Boston, and a Samoan from Hawaii. So to me, it was an embodiment of Arizona, or the United States, but also what I reflected on Arizona, and that diversity and that appreciation for everyone coming together and working under a common goal. And that's what I like to see in America. That's something that I really gleaned from my service or my time in the Army and appreciated everyone being able to work together. But beyond that, I, on my second deployment, um, I came to that moment where I knew that I wanted to do something different with my life. I'd reached my, what I felt in my mind. I'd made sergeant in three years. I pretty fully well understand the howitzer and I wanted to move forward. I wanted to take my my skills into the civilian sector and wanted to improve um, my country back home. So I, sitting in a chew in Afghanistan on a computer, discovered uh, the School of Sustainability at ASU, at ASU, a fairly new school, 
at a school that could fall well under the topic today of climate change. Um, but for me, sustainability is about being resourceful and about accounting for all, all dynamics of life and not just maybe focusing on economic growth or uh, those things to propel the, propel the world, but to focus on all aspects and maybe how we can use different ecosystem services or social equity to propel a, a cultural identity of the quality in our, in our uh, state, in our country moving forward and ensuring a healthy trajectory for the population moving forward. But I wanted to take a more technical approach to my career, so I'm now minoring in sustainability and majoring in urban planning. I'm currently in the 4 plus 1 program at, at ACU, the graduate school. So I found my purpose after the military. I wanted to help people in cities and how we developed our, our infrastructure and make sure that it was green. But I needed that camaraderie. I was missing that brotherhood from the military. So I played hockey growing up for nine years. I originally was playing soccer at five, but I was a little too fat to be running around in the sun. So I found the ice rink, and I, uh, I love hockey. Hockey to me, that locker room, that camaraderie, the loyalty, the brotherhood in there, it's a great time. Um, I enjoy the sport fully, but I'd be truly amiss without mentioning my girlfriend. Um, she's my adventure partner, love of my life. We've been dating for three years, and I look forward to a future with her and raising a family with that family first mentality and the honor of maybe continuing the military tradition or whatever the case, service to, service to others and really just helping everyone else. So with that, I'd just like to say thank you and that's me.